Hey yogis, welcome. In today's class, we're gonna be doing a longer sequence, vinyasa style, so connecting breath to movement. It's a little bit on the stronger side, but if you know our channel, that's kind of what we do. So take as many breaks as you need, modify whatever poses you'd like, and all you need is your mat. Let's begin in a comfortable seat, either hero's pose or cross-legged. Place your hands wherever it's comfortable. Close down the eyes. Sit nice and tall. Find some length in the spine. And exhale all the air out. Empty the lungs. And take a deep breath in. Fill up. Feel the crown of your head reach up towards the sky. And as you exhale, relax the shoulder blades down the back. And take a few more deep breaths here on your own. With each exhale, you settle in, ground down, arrive here on your mat in this space. Let go of anything that you had going on before this class or anything that you have going on afterwards. And give yourself permission to be here now. Bring that awareness to the breath. And keep the eyes closed. Bring your right hand down to the ground next to you and reach your left arm up over your head. Side bend over to the right. And inhale back up through center. Left hand down on the ground. Right arm reaches up over your head. Over to the left. Deep breath here. Back up to center. You can open the eyes or keep them closed. We're gonna twist over to the right. The left hand is gonna to come to the outer right thigh. Right fingertips come behind you on the ground. Keep that spine nice and long. Back through center and over to the left. Left fingertips come behind you. Right hand comes to the outer left thigh. And a couple deep breaths here. Nice and easy, starting to warm up the spine. Connect with the breath. And back to center. Both arms reach up over your head, palms touch at the top. And exhale, hands come down to the heart. Gently bow your head down towards your hands. Just take a moment here to set your intention for your practice. What is it that you're going to bring to the mat today? Where are you going to focus your energy on? Seal that intention by bringing the thumbs to the forehead. Gently bow down as a gesture of gratitude for yourself for showing up today on the mat. Namaste and welcome. Blink open the eyes. Walk the hands forward. Come into a tabletop. We'll begin with a wrist warm-up. First, I want you to tuck the toes under. Sit back on the heels. Start to stretch out the bottom of the feet. And then slide the hands about six inches away from the knees. Spread the fingers wide, but not too wide. Keep the arms straight. The eyes of the elbows point forward, so you have an external rotation of the upper arms. Start to shift forward, come up over the wrists, maybe over the knuckles or fingers. 
and sit back on the heels. Send it forward and back, forward and back. And what you're looking for here is just that end range stretch in the wrists. You're not going too far to where anything is pinching or you feel any sharp pain. You're just stretching out the wrists. And now stay on the palms of the hands, but then rotate the fingers so that they face outward up to the edge of your mat. And then bring the wrists just a couple inches apart. And then start to make some circles around the wrists. So you really explore the movement in every part of the wrist. Switch directions on that circle. Now come on to the backs of the wrists. The fingertips are going to point towards the knees. Again, keep the arms straight and then sit back towards the heels. The wrists are probably going to lift off. Gently sway left and right. A little counter stretch. And if you still don't feel the stretch here, then you can just slide your hands a little bit farther away from the knees and then again sit back towards the heels. Sit back on the heels, shake out the wrists. And then place the hands, lift the knees, downward dog. Begin to bend one knee and then the other. Start to explore a little bit of movement in the shoulders, the hips. Maybe even lift the heels, send them off to one side. Bend the knees to get a little bit of a side bend in the back. And then bend both knees and lift the heels. Start to pull your chest closer to your quads. Press onto the inside part of your hands, the base of the thumb, the base of the index finger, and then push the ground away. So you're really trying to find that straight line from your tailbone all the way down to the wrists. Now see if you can keep that straight line and then start to slowly lower the heels down just as far as it's comfortable for you, to down dog. Now keep the left hand where it's at. You're just going to reach the right arm underneath and grab onto the opposite leg, so the left leg, either the left calf or the left hamstring. And then with that right hand holding onto the leg, you're going to start to pull your chest through and under, a little bit of a twist in the upper body. And back to center, release the right hand down. And reach through with that left hand, either grab onto the calf or the hamstring. At the same time that you're pulling your chest through and under, you're still pushing the ground away, so you're not sinking into your right shoulder socket. and release the left hand down, down dog. Inhale, shift forward to high plank. The shoulders stack over the wrists. The hips are about the same height as the shoulders. And then you're really rounding the back. So you're protracting the shoulder blades away from each other. And you're pushing the ground away. If you want more cues of a plank, you can Head over to our tutorial videos, and there's a full breakdown there. From here, shift forward, come up high on the toes, and then bend the elbows, chaturanga. If you need to set the knees down, you can, but the arms are only going to come 90 degrees. So the shoulders do not come lower than the elbows. Straighten the arms back to plank, and lift the hips, downward dog. Inhale, shift forward, back to plank. And this time, step the feet about as wide as your mat. So it's a wide-legged plank. 
keep the tailbone tucked under, push the ground away so you almost have a hollow body. And then send the hips off to the right, let them lower down, hover. And then use the core, engage, pull back through center and over to the left. Back through center to the right, and over to the left. So you're almost making a C shape with the hips as you're bringing them up and over. You have that engagement of the core the whole time. One more time each side. Back to center, we meet in plank, lift the hips, down dog. Begin to engage your ujjayi breath, that gentle sound of the ocean in the back of your throat by constricting your vocal cords and the muscles between your vocal cords. That helps you control the pace of your breath throughout your class. So try to keep that steady breath, both the inhalation and the exhalation throughout the entire class. Inhale, shift forward, high plank. And the right knee comes to the nose. Hold it here, round the back. Hug the thigh into the chest. Then flex the foot, step it between the hands for a low lunge. Gently set down the left knee. Untuck the toes, inhale, arms rise. Exhale, shift the hips forward and down. And try to bring the biceps as close as you can to the ears. Keep the arms straight. And cinch in the ribs. Release the hands behind you, interlace behind the back. Start to send the hands down the left hamstring. And the gaze comes up towards the ceiling. Relax the shoulders down away from the ears. Release the hands, start to straighten the right leg for half splits. For me, I need to walk my right heel forward a few inches because I have abnormally long legs in proportion to my torso. So you might not need to do that for you, but what we're looking for here is to stack the left hip on top of the left knee. So whatever allows you to do that, go for it. Once you're there, keep a micro bend in the right knee. Keep that right foot flexed so the toes are pointing up towards your head or the ceiling. And exhale, melt down over the right leg. You can let your head hang heavy. See if you can notice any stretching in the neck, the upper back. And start to re-bend the right knee. Right sole of the foot touches down. Left hand comes next to the right foot. Left toes tuck under, revolved side angle. Right arm reaches up to the sky. So the left leg is straight, the right leg is bent. Send all the energy out the right fingertips. You're really trying to find as much length as you can between your right hand and your left hand. I can't remember what's next. Oh yeah. Gaze comes back down towards the ground. Come on to the knife edge of the left foot, stack the feet, side plank. Continue to reach your right arm up towards the sky. Maybe the gaze comes towards the right thumb. Keep the hips lifted, the glutes engaged. And then reach your right arm up over your head and then come on to both feet, so our one arm plank. Just try your best here. You could always set the right hand down if you need to. But ideally, you're trying to lower your right shoulder down so it's about the same height as the left. And right hand plants down, high plank. Shift forward, lower down, chaturanga. Push it back up, high plank. And then lower all the way down to the ground. Five, four, three, 
two, one. Once you're there, belly touches down, untuck the toes. Inhale, baby cobra. Chest lifts off. The hands barely lift up off the ground. You're really utilizing the muscles in your back to keep your chest lifted. And exhale, lower down. Push the hips back to the heels, child's pose. Just one breath here. Reset, reconnect with that ujjayi breath. And then lift the hips, downward dog. Inhale, shift forward, high plank. Exhale, left knee to the chest. Hold here, round the back. Hug the thigh in, point the left foot. Flex the left foot, step it between the hands, low lunge. Set down the right knee, untuck the toes. Inhale, arms lift. Release the hands behind the back, interlace. And then send the hands down the right hamstring. Maybe the chin tips up towards the ceiling. Continue to pull your left heel towards the back of the mat so you're still engaging the left hamstring. Then release the hands, start to straighten the left leg, half splits. With each inhale, you find a little more length in the spine. And each exhale, you melt down over the left leg. Continue at the pace of your own breath as you lift and lower. to re-bend the left knee. For side angle, right toes tuck under, lift the right knee up. Revolved side angle. Left arm reaches up towards the sky. So again, that right leg is straight. Left leg is bent. And your arms are fully engaged. Breath is soft. Gaze comes back down towards the ground. Knife edge of the right foot. Stack the feet. Side plank. Just try your best here. You can always modify your side planks. You can step one foot down or a knee. What's more important is that you have the integrity of the shoulder girdle and the lift in the hips. So it's always better to set the knees down and modify so that you stay safe in your body. Then reach the left arm up over your head. Come on to both feet, one arm plank. And again, just try your best here. Four, three, two, one. Left hand down, high plank. Shift forward high on the toes, bend the elbows. Let them touch the rib cage, chaturanga. Push it back up, high plank. And lower all the way down to the mat. Untuck the toes. Inhale, cobra. So this time the hands stay on the ground as you start to put light pressure into the hands to help lift the chest. Keep the glutes engaged. And exhale, lower down. Tuck the toes under. Lift the knees, engage the quads. Push up, plank. Lift the hips, down dog. Inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees. Step or float to the top of your mat. Take an inhale, halfway lift and lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Soft bend in the knees, roll all the way up to standing. Arms reach up overhead. Exhale to chair pose. Bend the knees, sit the hips low. Heel toe the big toes together. 
so that the big toes and the knees touch. Again, cinch in the ribs. Bring the biceps as close to the ears as you can. And exhale, straighten the legs, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, back to chaturanga. So either step the feet back or float back. Push up, high plank. And exhale, lower down, five, four, three, two, one, belly touches down, release the feet, interlace the hands behind the back, inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. Place the hands under the shoulders, tuck the toes, push it up, plank, lift the hips, down dog. Inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, step, float, or handstand to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Take the full length of your breath. Come all the way up to standing. Arms reach. And exhale to chair. Stay here, two breaths. Clean it up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, place the hands, step or float the feet back, chaturanga. Push it up, high plank. And exhale, lower all the way down to the ground. Four, three, two, one. Untuck the toes. And then extend the arms out to your sides for locust. Inhale, lift everything up. So the thighs lift off, the chest lifts off. Glutes are engaged. And exhale, lower down. Place the hands under the shoulders. Tuck the toes. Push it up, high plank. Lift the hips, downward dog. Great job. Take a few breaths here to reset. Reconnect with the breath. Now we can see why downward dog is a resting pose. So see if you can slow down the breath here. Soften. Inhale, shift forward, high plank. Then bring the feet together, big toes touch. Side plank on the left. Right arm reaches up to the sky. Now stay in that side plank with the arms, and then you're gonna bring the right knee to the right armpit. See if you can hold it here. Modified side plank. The gaze comes back down towards the ground. The right foot is going to step there for pyramid pose. Left foot comes forward a few inches. Both legs are straight. And ideally, both heels are down on the ground, so you might need to walk your left foot forward a few inches in order to get that heel down. And again, just like we did in that half splits, keep that little micro bend in the right knee. And the exhale, melt down over the leg. Now keep the legs where they're at as you inhale, halfway lift. Keep your left fingertips down on the ground or on a block if you have it. And send the right arm straight up to the sky. Revolve triangle. Release the right hand back down to the ground. Shift forward, warrior three prep. Left foot is gonna float off. Neither fingertips down on the ground or on a couple of blocks. Try to keep a little bit of a lift in the shoulders so there's some space in the collarbone. Slowly begin to re-bend the right knee. Left foot touches down back of the mat for warrior two. Cartwheel the arms open.
So that right leg is almost 90 degrees, back leg is straight. And what's most important as a warrior two is you should be able to see your big toe on the inside of your right knee. So if you can't see your big toe there, then you either need to lift the hips up an inch or two, and then open the knee. Or you can just pivot your left, or sorry, pivot your right foot to the left one inch or so. And what that does is it starts to reduce the twisting in the right knee. So the knee is a hinge joint. We always want it to move just one direction, nothing else. It's one of the most common injuries in yoga, is the knees. Last breath here. Right hand flips up towards the sky, inhale, reverse it back. And exhale, extended side angle, right forearm on the thigh, left arm up over your head. Inhale, reverse it back, big breath. And exhale, shift forward for half moon. Left foot floats off. Right leg becomes straight. With a little micro bend, you start to find some relief in the right quad. And that left foot is flexed as if you're standing against the back wall. And you're really using your abductor muscles of your left leg your IT band, the outside of your left leg, to keep that leg lifted. From here, we're gonna lower down into a seated twist. So that left knee is gonna start to come down outside the right foot and come into a seat. So you could either have your right foot to the left of your left thigh. You could also just bring it over to the right side, so it kind of depends uh, how it feels on the hip. Right hand comes behind you, inhale, left arm to the sky, lengthen first. And then exhale, take that hook either with the tricep or with the forearm. Again, it depends on your proportions. For me, twisting and binds have always been super easy because I have really long limbs. But for some people, not so much. So it's really important to just listen to your body and find your own edge, what feels best for you. Don't worry so much about what the pose looks like. What's more important is how you feel. Release that hook, gaze comes back forward towards the front of the mat. And then you're gonna lean over to the left side and then swing the right leg straight back for pigeon pose. So you might need to lift the hips up or readjust on your mat. But that right leg is gonna be parallel to the edge of your mat. And this left leg is gonna be wherever it feels most comfortable for you. So some people like to have the shin parallel to the front of the mat. For me, that's too deep of a twist in the knee joint. So I like to have the heel closer to my hips. Completely up to you. Either way, come on to the fingertips once the hips feels like it's in a good spot. Inhale, lift the chest, engage the glutes. And exhale, start to lower down. And just to whatever degree feels good for you. Maybe even for you coming onto the forearms is too tight. That's fine, just stay on the wrists. Or maybe for you, the forearms, you still don't feel anything in the outer left hip, no stretching at all. So if that's the case, then you can lower your chest all the way down to the ground. But even for me, it's just a little bit too deep. So on my forearms is what feels best. Decide for you, as always. The most important part of your practice is the breath. And as long as you have the awareness 
on each inhalation and each exhalation. Then you're doing yoga. As you begin to make your way out of this pose, bring both wrists underneath the shoulders and then begin to straighten the arms. So use the strength of your arms to lift your chest back up. Tuck your right toes under, lift your right knee up. And the left leg is gonna come up and over for wild thing. So the left toes touch down behind the right calf. As you inhale, lift the hips, engage the glutes. And exhale, left hand comes back to the mat for one-legged plank. That left leg is gonna stay lifted. So that left leg is parallel to the ground. Shift forward high on the ball of the right foot, bend the elbows, one-legged chaturanga. Push it back up to plank and exhale, left knee to nose. Inhale back, one-legged plank, lower down, chaturanga. Knee to chest. Back to one-legged plank one more time. Lower down. Push it up, knee to chest. And exhale, back to plank. Lower down, chaturanga. Last one, push it up, plank. And exhale, lower all the way down. Five, four, three, two, one. Untuck the toes. Inhale, lift the chest. And then keep the lift in the chest. Start to push more weight into the hands for upward dog. Straighten the arms. Engage the glutes. The gaze is straight ahead. If you're wondering why the gaze is straight ahead, then you can watch our tutorial video on upward dog or downward dog. Last breath. And engage the core. Lift the hips, downward dog. Beautiful job. Inhale, shift forward, high plank. Big toes come together, touch. Knife edge of the right foot, left arm reaches up to the sky, side plank. Hold it here in the side plank and bring the left knee towards the left armpit. Again, hold, push the ground away. Gaze comes back down towards the ground as you step the left foot there slowly with control. Pyramid pose, right foot comes forward, both heels down on the ground. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, melt down. Continue to inhale. And exhale. As you lift and lower, see if you can try to slow down the breath. Add one more second to each inhale. One more second to each exhale. Last one, inhale, lift. The right fingertips stay on the ground, left arm reaches up towards the sky, revolve triangle. Left hand comes back down to the ground, warrior three prep. Right foot floats off, A micro bend in the left knee. And I can almost guarantee that you can lower your right hip down a little bit lower so it's the same height as the left. Start to rebend the left knee, right foot touches down back of the mat, warrior two. Arms cartwheel open. Move slowly here through the transition. There's no rush. Thank you. 
in a vinyasa style class, the transitions are just as important as the final pose. So there's never any rushing to get from point A to point B. The journey is really the point anyways. So sort of shift your mind away from having an agenda and step more into that feeling of awareness. You're already exactly where you're meant to be. Left hand flips up towards the sky, inhale, reverse it back. And exhale, extended side angle, right arm up over the head, big reach. Inhale, reverse. And exhale, shift forward, half moon. Right foot starts to float off. Right arm reaches up towards the sky. As you stack the right hip on top of the left. Slowly start to lower the hips down for that seated twist, supine twist. The right knee is gonna come to the outside of the left foot as you come onto a seat. Now again, if you're here, feel free to modify the legs however you wish. Left hand comes behind you on the ground, inhale, right arm to the sky. That lengthen the spine first before you take that hook. Either, yeah, either with the tricep, or the forearm. It's okay if your left hip lifts up a little bit. There's no need to force it to the ground. You're just giving your sacrum a little bit more space to move. That's fine. Release that hook gaze, comes back forward towards the front. Shift forward, lean over to the right, and then swing that left leg straight back for pigeon. Again, maybe lift the hips, readjust yourself on the mat. Once you found a good position, come onto the fingertips, inhale, lengthen. And exhale, start to walk the hands down. And if you do feel any pinching or sharp pain in the right knee in this case, then you'll want to flex your toes, your right toes, towards your right knee or uh, yeah, just flexing them up. So what that's going to do is it begins to engage the ligaments that surround the knee, the knee joint. And it uh, reduces the twisting. So usually when you start to feel pain in the knees, it's already a little bit too late. Like maybe you've been ignoring it or you haven't been paying attention to it as much in your practice. So it's Really, really important that as soon as you start to feel any pinching or sharp pain in the knee or tingling or numbness, it's a sign that you need to back off and rest or don't go as deep in poses. And if you've been watching our channel for a while, you would know that for Flo and I, depth in a pose is never the goal. The goal is to find your edge physically and don't go past that. Once you're there, connect with the breath and breathe through it.
The hands come underneath the shoulders as you start to straighten the arms, lift the chest, tuck the left toes under, lift the left knee up, wild thing on the left side. So the right foot is gonna come behind the left calf. As you inhale, lift the hips. You're on the knife edge of the left foot and the left leg is completely straight. Keep the glutes engaged. Reach that right arm up over your head. And exhale, right hand comes back down, one-legged plank. Right leg is lifted. Clean it up here. Shift forward, come up high on the ball of the left foot. Bend the elbows so they touch the rib cage. One leg chaturanga. Push it back up, high plank. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale back, one-legged plank, lower down, chaturanga. Push it back up, knee to nose. You can do it, last push of class. Send that right leg back, one-legged plank, lower down, chaturanga. Push it up, high plank, knee to chest. And then set both feet down, high plank, one more. Shift forward, lower down, chaturanga. Push it back up, high plank. And lower down to a count of five, four, Three, slow it down. Two, one, lower the chest all the way down, untuck the toes. And inhale, lift up for cobra. Now stay here, keep the glutes and the back muscles engaged. Push into the hands even more, upward dog. And engage the core, lift the hips, downward dog. Now we're all gonna meet at the top of our mat in Malasana, yogi squat. So you could either just walk the feet outside the hands, come into a squat, or maybe you wanna get some air time, some hang time before the feet touch down. So it's a little bit of a handstand hop or a donkey kick hop. Maybe give it a try. We'll all meet there in the squat. Set the hips down once you're there. The triceps come inside the thighs. Gently sway the hips left and right. Maybe take a wrist release here. You can roll out the wrists. And then set the butt down. Really scientific, I know. Bring the hands behind you, the fingertips point towards the hips. Feet are about hip distance apart. And then lift the hips up, reverse tabletop. Keep the glutes engaged. Imagine pulling your heels closer to your fingertips. And then shift forward. And then lower the hips all the way down. All the way down to the mat. Keep the hands and the feet where they're at as you inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, maybe you bend the elbows towards the back of the mat. Inhale, lift. And lower. Maybe close down your eyes. Start to walk the hands forward. And then we're gonna do full cow face. So you're gonna take your right leg first, bring it down onto the mat. And then the left leg is gonna come on top of it. So ideally we want the two knees stacked on top of each other. For everyone, this isn't going to be possible, but just try your best. For me, the easiest way to stack is to place the hands at the side of my body and then lift the hips so that that leg slides down and then you can sit back down. So if you have a block with you, that can be useful in this pose. If this already feels like it's too tight for you and you can't even sit here, then you can just place a block underneath the hips so that it lifts the hips a little higher and decreases that stretch. Or if you're sitting here and it's really easy, like you could watch a whole movie sitting in this pose, 
then I recommend you can take a block, put it underneath the knees to increase the stretch that way. So decrease the stretch, put it under the hips, increase the stretch, put it under the knees. So as you're here, sit nice and tall. And then if you'd like to, you can start to lower the chest down onto the legs. I know this is a really intense pose on the hips. So if you can, try to relax the muscles in the feet. Relax the muscles in the face. We're not here for long. Place the hands back down on the ground as you lift your chest back up if you're laying down. And then from here, you're going to bring the sole of your left foot down on the mat. And then we're just gonna stand up, turn to the right, take a full 360. Trust me on this, I know you have to leave the camera, the laptop in front of you as you turn around, but don't worry. Do a 360, we'll meet back in full cow face on the other side. So lift the hips, turn to your right all the way and as you start to lower the left leg is going to come down first and then the right leg is on top of it you made it back i'm still in front of you on the laptop all is good so as you get comfortable here as much as you can then you might already notice that this side feels a little bit different than the first side for me it does i can notice one hip feels a little tighter than the other so just honor that. Just because you were able to use a block under the knees on the first side, maybe you don't need to use a block on this side. Option here to lower the chest down onto the thighs. And maybe you lower down and you notice that it's too deep for you, it doesn't feel right then it's a perfect sign that you should back off, come back out of it, that's fine. It's every, every day that you step on the mat, you're stepping onto the mat in a different body than you did the day before, or the week before, the year before. So that's why it's so very important to use the anchor of the breath to pull you into the present moment so that you can really be aware of where your body is in space and how it's feeling that day. Slowly begin to lift the chest if you had it lowered. And then you're gonna lean back, send both legs forward, straighten out the legs, give them a little bit of a shake. And then bend the legs once again, start to lower onto your back. And the heels come close to the fingertips. And then begin to lift the hips up for bridge pose. Engage the glutes. Draw the heels towards the back of your mat. So you really start to feel that engagement in the hamstrings, the glutes. Option here to interlace the hands behind the back as you tuck the shoulders under. If the hands were interlaced, you can release. All together, reach the arms up over your head. Lift the heels as you lower the back down. And the hands come back down to the heels for either a second round of bridge or if wheel is part of your practice, you're welcome to come into wheel as well. So 
So if you are in bridge pose, what's important here is that you keep a little bit of space between your chin and your sternum so you're not collapsing in the front side of your chest. It helps protect your neck. And if you are in wheel, you're gonna start to lower down, but tuck the chin to the chest first and then let your shoulders touch down on the mat. If you are in bridge, reach your arms up over your head. All together, slowly lower the hips all the way down to the mat. Bring the hands back to the heels. Windshield wiper the knees left and right. And then bring both knees over to the right side of your body and extend your left arm out to your side for a supine twist. Just a couple breaths here. So try to relax and melt into it as quickly as possible. There's no resistance. And then bring the knees back through center and over to the left. All the way down, right arm reaches out to your side. And again, waste no time dropping in. Bring the knees back to center. Hug the knees into the chest, give yourself a little squeeze, maybe rock a little to the left and the right. Take a deep breath in, fill up the lungs. And exhale, open mouth, let it go. As you release the heels to the corners of your mat. For your final pose of your practice, as always, Shavasana, palms face up towards the sky. Relax the jaw. Let the eyeballs sink into your sockets. And with every exhale, you just release any muscular tension that you're holding on to. You should be so proud of yourself for taking the time to roll out your mat today join me in practice connecting your breath to your movements and all the time remembering that yoga is not just about advanced poses and being flexible yoga is really about using the breath and letting that breath pull you through these movements so that you can discover your body and discover your mind as more of an experience. So bring all of your attention to the breath. Soak in the feelings of gratitude that you have for this experience. This experience that we have as humans in these bodies on this earth. I'll end the video here. But feel free to stay as long as you like. Thank you again for joining me. And I'll see you in the next video with love and gratitude. Namaste.